Nikiatu, this film is such a fascinating blend of genres. It's this really interesting domestic story, and it also has these kind of folklore and horror elements to it. What about that combination was appealing to you and made you want to try that mixture? Um, I knew I didn't want to execute a domestic story with a, a black woman protagonist in the ways that we've become accustomed to seeing the few of these stories that are actually told in the mainstream. And so I think horror and folklore allows um, a truthfulness in a way that we traditionally shy away from and perceive as pedantic or preachy. Um, genre utilizes or gives you tools in your arsenal that are really fun and sexy to play with as a filmmaker, whether it's the soundscape or it's a creature. Um, but all of, it, all of it is very expensive in terms of VFX, mm. whether it's practical effects or it's CGI. And so, you know, we knew what we were up against, but I knew that my North Stars of like Bong Joon-ho, the host, and a Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of Water in terms of the films I was thinking about uh, stylistically, but then you have like Usman Semben's Black Girl that is a straightforward drama. So just, it, it feels very cross genre and the filmmakers I admire navigate cross genre elements in their work. Mm -hmm. So I got permission from these filmmakers to create what felt like a cross genre piece that was a little tricky to pin down. Cinco, from your point of view, when you read Nick Yatu's script for the first time, what did you find most interesting and fascinating about it? There's a lot going on. I think that's, like you said, there was so much going on and, and, and she tied it together so well. And, and I always say that, you know, when I read something, as I've continued to progress on this journey as an actor, um, I always go, even if I'm not in it, I'm gonna watch it. Mm. And that was the biggest thing is that from, from every character that I felt on the screen that had such a, such a pivotal storyline and narrative to tell the story for Aisha, everyone mattered. And then the backdrop of, of elements of, of, of I guess like lore that I had never knew before mattered and it popped off the screen. So for me, or popped off the page. So then the opportunity to find a way where I can inhabit it or convince her that I was the person to inhabit it <laughs> became the journey. <laughs> was that hard to do? Um, no, she actually made it like, I mean, Nikki Atu is very specific. Um, she knows what she wants. And I think that's why people love her work as a, as a filmmaker and as an artist. And I think the connection that in this story that I felt I, I had to Malik, she knew would make sense and would help the vision overall become even more potent. So I think because she already had an idea in mind, we had a great language of interpretation of, of me kind of running that race mm. and, and knowing that it was a race because up until you get the call saying yes, um, you know, she, she, she holds the cards close to her chest. And then, you know, a lot of actors would be like, when I got the script and I was, reading it and I knew, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I knew I had to convince this woman to hire me. <laughs> <laughs> he actually had to convince Anna, little did he know, because True. chemistry casting was a big part of this process. So once we locked in our lead, yeah. I had to observe with the three Maliks that I narrowed down, who Ooh. did she have the most chemistry with? Yeah. And so she confirmed my suspicions based on my observations. We had instant chemistry. I think, you know, it yeah. was one of those things that was just... <laughs> it shows. <laughs> um, we did. And, and it was convincing both women that it made sense. Yeah. You know, like, and, and I mean, I knew that. Like, I knew that going, I was like, okay. <laughs> And then I knew, and, and it was once where, I don't, do you remember when there was a, the Zoom hadn't turned off? <laughs> and I heard them talking about me. And I was like, I didn't remember that. And I go, I go, <laughs> I go, hey, uh, you don't remember this? I was like, uh, I think I should be out of this conversation. So I hit leave. <laughs> you don't remember that? I don't remember. What were they saying? <laughs> All good things, honestly. Like, I didn't, I mean, at least it was, it was like brief deliberation. It had just started. It was like, yeah, so that was good. No, I think he was, you know, and, awesome. and I was like, oh, uh, you know what? I think I should. I should leave, y'all. Like I should, <laughs> I should get out of this conversation. A little peek behind the curtain. For I could have, I could have honestly turned my screen off and then <laughs> listened to the whole choice happen. But I was like, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be uh, the way to go on this one. Right. No, you wanted to be an upstanding young man, wanted, like it, Malik. Yes, bit, yes. Right? It was this art of imitating life, you know. And yeah. I could always say, I didn't know. Right. But I did. Right.
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nikia, for you, you and Nikiatu have a great history together. You've worked together on several projects. Can you take me through the journey of this one? Was it a roller coaster? Was it ever in danger of totally falling apart? How many years has this been for you two? Wow. Well, what I'll say is this actually was the first story she shared with me of her own. You know, Nikki Yachty is kind of a brilliant filmmaker, but she's also a writer and she had all these great original ideas. And she told this to me maybe in 2013-ish. Um, but um, to be fair, you know, there were other films that we tried to take on and other projects. Um, so really, we really started maybe in 2019. Um, and we were both being brought into the labs and I really thought this would be the best story of hers within her catalog to really pick up and, and move forward with. It felt more tangible than all the rest. And I knew it was something as a friend she was always going back to. And I just thought, you know what, let's just do this. Like, let's go for it. Mm. Okay, a couple last things. Nikia, since you have a history with Nikiatu, we're going to talk about her in front of her right now. Um, <laughs> Is when I watched this movie, I and I told you this, from the first moment I said, oh, I'm in the hands of a very confident director here. What has it been like for you as her filmmaking partner to see this evolution and to see what she's been able to achieve in this and what, how did you want to support her the most in this evolution? Well, for the first half of that question, I think for me it was just like, it's about time. You know, it, I've been working with her for so long. We've been trying to find, you know, financiers and supporters who could literally put their money where their mouth is. And so when we finally got that opportunity, I knew she was ready. I knew she could pull it off. It was just, we needed to do it. We needed people to step out of our way and just let her do her thing. Um, and she delivered in spades. I mean, I can't even say she did better than I thought because I knew she could do it. I knew what she was capable of. And then I can't really remember what the second half of the question was, but... <laughs> How you wanted to support. Oh, you know, I try to show up and support in a myriad of ways. I think as a, her producing partner, <laughs> I think the one thing I try to do is be a chameleon because, you know, this was still, this was an independently funded film. Mm. The resources were stretched. I tried to make sure everything could go to what you saw on the screen as much as possible. So as her partner, I try to be whatever any department needs of me at any given time so we can all cross that finish line together. And then I want to ask one question to Kiatu about the very specific moment where uh, Aisha asks Malik to guess what country she's from. And she says it starts with an S. <laughs> and he guesses Sierra Leone and South Africa before he guesses Senegal. Your Sierra Leonean American, was that put in there as a little shout out to your home country yeah, of course i always have to slide in a shout out nobody knows anything about sierra leone so and it's a tiny country and you know as a sierra leonean american filmmaker other sierra leoneans are like well why isn't she sierra leone because they don't understand the industry so they're like why didn't you cast why didn't you make this a sierra leonean story and it's much more complicated than that you know but um, any, even in the soundscape, Sam, Samfa, it was one of the artists. He's an amazing musician who's British, Sierra Leonean. We had the Condi band that's Sierra Leonean. So I, I snuck in hints that I am Sierra Leonean uh, where I could. I don't know. A few people are catching it here and there, but I had to, I had to give a little shout out to my people. I congratulate all three of you. I love this movie. It's a pleasure to see all of you. Great, great question. Yeah, Thank you. really great question. Thank you, Atu Jusu. Sequel Walls, Nikia Multeri. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you.